G'day, I'm Clive and welcome to CDP Outdoors and this video is dwelling up to Swamp Oak which is roughly 13 kilometers I've been walking for just over an hour now. It's taken it nice and easy. And one thing I will say is the wargles aren't placed all that well on this first part that's coming out of dwelling up. Uh, how can I put it? There could be a couple of extra ones put in coming off the track or directing you over because a few of the points you're just not sure. And with a few other tracks coming down here, you can see signs in the distance on the yellow posts, so you're not sure whether they're going to be the big one on the track or some of the other tracks. So you're going to have to keep your eyes open and just trust yourself. If you're new to this, be a bit daunting. I got a little bit concerned just back there and there's a post over that way and a post over this way and when you got to where the track splits off there was no actual sign for the bubble track crossing that small track but you could see the tracks over to your right. So I took a walk off and noticed they weren't the bubble track came back and decided to go up the track which I would have carried straight over onto and eventually noticed a wargle a bit further up well there was actually one in the back of the tree on that track but nothing on the front of the tree so yeah just be confident but keep your head up and eyes open Two hours in, it's been fairly nice. The bush, as usual, is just, just so beautiful. And when I say nice, I mean the the walk has been quite, um, how can I put it, nothing steep, but the gradual inclines and gradual declines, which is quite easy to cope with. time I've done any of this section or any of these sections I've done the <laughs> I'll take it easy going down there then I've done the Kalamunda to Dwanagot 
and nut sections of that quite often. So this is all going to be my first impressions. And like I said earlier in the video, I'm the first down the track today, and that's been verified quite often. There's some bloody big webs and strong webs across the track. Uh, the, the camera's taking the brunt of a lot of it, but it's still not fun. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's been beautiful out here this morning. I've not had to put too much effort into it. I'm going to concentrate a bit on going down some of these steps I've made with the small logs or the wooden posts I'm laying across. And that's about all. Oh, there's nothing else really. So far, this is only weird again. The uh, by the website, I see another one coming up now. Uh, yeah, it's just the spider webs, and <laughs> that's making me laugh. I was just thinking about how oh, the flies aren't bad enough yet. Put my bug net on, or the head net, that's what you call it. And I was thinking back when I lived in the UK. One fly was too many, it was pretty annoying. And here I am walking down here now, sometimes 15, 20 flies buzzing around my face, landing on different parts of my face, and just waving them off. How you change over time. Nice. Another extra shade. Get the hat off for a little while, give my head a bit of a breeze. This is just beautiful, this is. A bit like walking through a prehistoric forest. Let's show you up. I'm just loving it. Where should I put my feet? And this is what I meant about some of the wargles, the signs, which way to go. That one, the post has been lent up against a tree there. And here's a sign to another trail. So if we walk down a little bit further, we've got this track going off to the, the right, which I believe would have been where the original sign would have been. We're looking a little bit further in there, and there's the warble on the tree. So that's the way we're heading. And 
not long after the last sign I showed you, the last warble, we came through here. But there was no warble signs, none on any of the trees. So I came down, turned around, and there's the warble on that one, pointing up the way I've just come, but no warble pointing down this way. So at that one, you can easily get lost and go straight over the track and go wandering down there with not knowing where you're going. And then I got to this point, I had a look around, and down the River Road Estate, they call it, there's a warble on the tree there where there's a white arrow. So the warbles aren't getting any redder. So every chance I get, if I find it's going to be difficult or awkward, I'll do my best to point it out to you as we go. So let's carry on and see if we can find the rest of the warbles. Even though there's a pain with these warbles not being very well positioned, or not enough of them, I still love the walk. I have said in previous videos, the best thing for you to do when you're walking is keeping your posture right, your head up, your back straight. One that takes a lot of pressure off your shoulder straps for your pack. So make sure your waist belt, like I said earlier, is tightened up, taking the weight down to your hips. And it also enables you to keep your head up and see where the walkles are. I came from that way and I followed the track up and it came round to this right and this part is, would be very very easy to get lost there are no warbles no branches across any trail to stop you going any direction and the only way I can see would be up so I'm going to go up, which is left as I come round, and if it's the wrong way, I'll come back and I'll tell you. But it looks like it's been pretty well used, that one. Coming up that steep hill then, where there was no orgles or signs, it was the correct way. I found the walk up here, pointing that direction. I'm out of breath. <laughs> I'm out of shape I think as well. Alright, so I've got to go that direction now. And it's about 10 o'clock. So I've been going about 3 hours. And I'm we'll probably be about halfway. So, I'll see you shortly. minutes has been steep incline <sighs> I need to get my breath back and one thing I always do advise make sure you've got plenty of water and make sure you keep yourself hydrated I think I've said one or two of my videos about how much water you should be drinking each time. If you're just taking a sip, excuse me, out of breath still, it's not going to do you any good. You're going to need at least a cup, maybe 300, 350 mils worth of water. then that gives your body uh, for its organs a chance to take the fluid it needs and also to allow you to have some fluid in your water in your stomach as a reserve I've said in previous videos about 
it's got to be about eight years ago now I went out I started at North Bannister heading to to the uh, dwelling up and I was about six and a half hours in and I hadn't made it to White Horse Hills shelter I was about one 1.4 kilometers away and I just clapped with dehydration the temperatures had forecast similar to what it is this week but it actually got up into the 40s so I drank all my three three and a half litres of water I had no signs of dehydration none of those side effects I just went smack bang collapsed and that's where the spot tracker which I've got in the pouch here came in very handy I got up I grabbed my canister after having a little rest and I went to walk to White Horse Hills where I knew there was water and I went down again after about 10 steps so I got this out and I pressed the SOS button and within two and a half hours I've been picked up from the top of White Horse Hills taken to Jandakot and my wife had picked me up from Jandakot and I was home Bloody great service here so if you are going to go bush one make sure you got plenty of water two make sure you got yourself an EPIRB and this is a spot one it's the old version but still works really well and that's where I got my trail name another hiker on a building track name me spot so that's my track now or my trail name so if you see it in any of the books that's me I've nearly got my breath back properly my heart it's beating it's not going crazy it's quite regular easy so that's not too bad so I must be fitter than I thought so I'll grab my hat grab you guys and I'll carry on walking now and if, if I need to I'm not going to be stupid I will sit down again I'll have another drink of water and I'll wait five or ten minutes and then I'll go again about 11.25 nearly and there's 1.5 kilometers to go I think this is another 28 meters incline and then the rest is basically downhill to the shelter so I'll be bloody glad of that climbing up these hills so I couldn't be just flat no, you wouldn't get the best view then would you if it was just flat, we need to climb it's all worth it when we get to the top and just see how beautiful is where we are okay there's the sign for the shelter and there's the shelter over there in the bush this is a good sign I like this sign There you go, look. That means feet up. And then up we go. Swamp Oak Shelter. Oh, got a picnic bench over there. There's a fire pit that's got fire bands on now. Zero fires allowed. Another picnic bench there. Another fire pit here with some benches around. Oh, this 
one's been done up a bit. Another picnic bench there. Yeah, this one's been done up a bit. We've got a washing line in there, hooks in there. Another two picnic benches inside. Oh, that's it. How cool is that? Okay. About enough there. Three top, three bottom. So same over there. And probably five or six that are squeezed across there. How cool. And here's your code of ethics to the campsite. No campfires at the shelter. Really looking forward to get to this one today. My feet were really hurting. The trail, okay, the, or the track. The track, beautiful track. A lot of pea gravel, so you got to watch your step. The views are just fantastic. You come through the different types of wood, wooded forest, uh, forest area, different trees, just. Yeah, it, it is nice. All the wildlife, the emus, the kangaroos. Heard a couple of snakes. So uh, this time of the year, it would be nice and warm. The snakes are out, and they will be on a trail. So if you're going to be walking down a trail, use some walking poles to make some noise, so the snakes can hear you coming from afar and get out of your way. The the wargles, the signs on the Bilbo track. How good were they? Not very good actually. This last, probably the last one fifth of this section from dwelling up here to Swamp Oak was pretty good. So uh, there wasn't really much where you could go wrong on this last one fifth of the track, but that middle three fifths of the track, they were terrible. There were, uh, there, there were just signs missing or the post pulled off and moved halfway up. So. You have to carry on until you notice another trail, then check down the trail and see uh, the one of the wargles on the trees further down. Or that section where I stopped. And the only way you could tell which way to go was, was the worn track. If you're a uh, novice and haven't done this sort of thing before, you would probably have a very slim chance of knowing which way to go. So, just glasses off, it's all blurred, too close to cameras. People with some experience, they'd recognise that the track goes that way. But the signs, there was no signs, there was hard, or hardly any signs. And that to me wasn't good at all. So the, somebody from the Bilbo track needs to come out and check all these signs and replace the ones that need to be placing. There's a lot of the old ones where the actual yellow background and the wargle have been burnt off over the years or peeled off. So it's just a silver triangle. And then a lot of that triangle has been consumed by the tree itself. So the bark's grown over the wargle. It, and some of the signs or the wargles that were on some of the trees were pointing straight up when the actual track went that way. So, yeah. People could get confused there or even lost. Yeah, that's, I think that's, that's the only gripe I've got. That and my feet are hurting still. But no, the, the shelter, the actual campsite looks really nice. Like I said, we've got one, two, three picnic tables outside. We've got two under the new extended bit they've got here. They've got a washing line going up there, another one going here so you can hang your wet gear off or your shirts or your tops or your socks and jocks to let them air out so they smell better. Plenty of room for people to throw their swag down or their sleeping mats and get their head down. I haven't had a chance to go look at the camp pictures yet. But excuse me. Oh, excuse me. But with what I did see of the couple coming up this way, they, they were they were pretty tidy. They, they were pretty tidy. Yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed this.
video today and it's giving you some information of what to expect between Dwelling Up and Swamp Oak. Uh, I think if I'd been 10 kilos lighter it would have been a lot easier for me. So yeah, I don't think, it's, it's, if you're fairly fit this part of the track isn't that bad. So let, let me just finish it with that way. So if you enjoyed this video and got some good information out of it and you're not a subscriber please go down below and click on the subscribe button click on the uh, notification bell so you can be notified of all future videos and click on all out of the list from the notification bell and click the like button and even share it with all your mates so until next time get out there have some fun and take care